This is the all right. So this is the MATLAB portion of the lecture. So before we get started, we have to look at in MATLAB what is the definite. How do you define functions? So hopefully you have read the corresponding material in Insight. So how do you define a function in MATLAB? I mean, you can go file new function, but let's just do a script. And how do you do it? So suppose I want to define a function that squares the input. Okay. So what's the syntax in MATLAB to do it? Function what? So the output type, I mean the output variable, if you will, y is square of x, is the name, okay, and then end, yes? So suppose I want to have the ability, so how do I define the square? Let me ask you, let me ask you, so what do I do? Let me save this, my week four stuff called square. All right, so how do I, so will this work? And what are the limitations of this? So will this work? And if it will work, what are the limitations of this? Well, let's get into MATLAB. So you have the square dot m defined. So what's the problem with this, if any? These are the kind of questions I'll ask you on the exam in week five. So you need to know MATLAB syntax to answer this. If you don't know MATLAB syntax, well, you'll be in trouble. So does this work? Well, square five, what's that? 25, okay. Seems to work. What's the problem with this? So if you don't know the answer, that means you don't know MATLAB syntax, and it's not good, right? What's the problem? Will this work? So how do you fix it? Use the dot operator, correct? So it's not good if you don't know the answer to the question. So the answer is it's just not going to work in the sense you can't square matrices, right? So now, what do you think is the result? So there's another question I can ask. No, I, not I can ask, I will ask on the exam. Is So now that you fixed it, it looks like there's no error. It looks like there's an ants here. So what do you get? Again, remember, you don't have access to MATLAB on your exam. So what's the result of squaring this? So the fact that I fixed it, it looks like I get an answer. So what's the result? Huh? What's the matrix squared? Tell me exactly where it is. You should be able to do this without a calculator. Don't worry, you don't have access to a calculator, you don't have access to MATLAB on the exam, right? 125,400, correct. So that's stored in a variable ants, and there it is, okay? So this is how you define a function. Now, let's look at our temperature class. And I'm gonna close this, I'm gonna go to file new, and the good news is, here is a um, class editor script, if you will. So that's what I'm going to use. So the keyword is class def, right? So in other words, this is what I'm talking about when I say, when I say a language, language is OOP compatible. MATLAB is OOP compatible, the, later versions, the latest versions of MATLAB. In older versions of MATLAB, you couldn't do this, right? So you can ask, so what if I have a class? I can't, can I just declare a... Um, can I just do this using like functions? Yes and no. It, no in the sense, for example, under properties, okay, you're gonna have, so let's do this. Let's just see what is the difference between a class and a function, right? Uh, so let's call this temperature sensor, okay? So this is a MATLAB implementation this is a MATLAB implementation of the temperature sensor class from chapter two of Booch, okay, something. All right, so what are the different properties which we discussed that we could have? Temperature sensor, all right. What are the different properties we could have? Temperature. 
sorry, location, and then what? Well, we discussed temperature and location, and if you read the chapter 2 of Booch, like it's in your reading assignment, there is, okay, uh, differentiation, if you will, or a modularity in the temperature sensor, in the sense, uh, Booch distinguishes between an active sensor and a passive sensor, okay? How many of you have used temperature sensors before? So some people raise their hand. So as electrical engineers, give me an ex what is the difference between uh, differentiate between passive and active temperature sensors? So if is active is false, if you want to see is there a Boolean in MATLAB, there is, okay, it's actually called the logical <coughs> operator. So if you type help, let me turn on the more functionality. It's called logical, all right? So true, false. For example, I can define is true, is true, okay? Is this, I think it's called is logical. Yeah, is logical, is true, oops, it's called is logical, there, okay? So is true is of type logical. Anyway, so that's what is active is going to be, that's the type. But notice, I've never specified what the type is here. Is that clear? So this is called abstraction, at, this is abstraction. Temperature is an abstract idea, but then let's be more specific. If you're talking about temperature, before we look at how to differentiate between passive and active temperature sensors, what is something you need to describe temperature? Units. So units, what units do you think we're going to use? What are the different units in which you can describe temperature? Kelvin. Kelvin then what? Celsius. Celsius and Fahrenheit. All right, so we'll use Celsius. Okay. What unit do you... Uh, you should either use Celsius or Kelvin, right? Fahrenheit is not standard unit. So, and what do you, what do you need? Celsius or Kelvin depends on what the situation is. But we'll use Celsius. So now, getting back, give me an example of a passive temperature sensor. Well, so give me an example of a passive temperature sensor, physical. So, some of you raised your hands that you've used temperature sensors. So, what kind of temperature sensors have you used? What's the difference between passive and active sensor? Let me ask you that. What's the difference between a passive sensor and an active sensor? Would a passive sensor just be like a thermistor? Yeah. Circuit? So, what is this? So, passive is a thermistor. So, what is an example then of an active sensor? And this should tell you what the difference is between a passive sensor and an active sensor. So what's an example of an active temperature sensor? Temperature probe? No, not temperature probe. Okay. So, for example, well, let's see if I'm online. Hopefully, that, yeah, I should be online because I can get on MATLAB license server. So let's look at LM38, right? Ah, it's later. Uh, 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 let's see, LM38, I think. LM38 sensor, temperature sensor. Okay, there you go. So I was right. Uh, temperature sensor. Let's see if I can get the data sheet. So LM38 is an example of a temperature sensor. Let's see if I can get a data sheet. Uh, local temperature sensors here. It's LM35, sorry. So let's look at LM35. Uh, so what's the difference between an LM35 Precision, beautiful, centigrade temperature sensor, okay? Whose output voltage is linearly proportional. So here it is. The LM series is a precision integrated circuit temperature, blah, 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 uh, blah, blah. Oh, okay, here it is. Uh, precision is linear. Whose output voltage is linearly proportional to the Celsius centigrade temperature. Okay. So is the LM30 an example of an active sensor or a passive sensor? Active. Huh? What? Uh, Why is it active? That's correct. So thermistor is passive, LM30 is active. So what, what's the difference? Mm. 
semester resistance changes according to temperature and the L138 voltage? Well, let me ask you this. So a, a good point was made that the uh, thermistor's resistance changes is temperature, whereas the LM38, the voltage changes. But let me ask you this then. When the resistance changes with temperature for a thermistor, do you read the resistance or do you read the voltage change? Voltage change. So that's not the difference. So what is the difference between an active and a passive sensor? Almost getting warm. Active consumes power. So I'm opening up the data sheet if, uh, I mean, if it ever will. So let me ask you this. Does a thermistor consume power? <coughs> yes, it does. So that's not the difference. So let's be more precise. You're, you're getting warm. LM38 supplies the voltage. So getting warmer. So that's not the... So what do you mean by supplies the voltage? There's there's an extra pin on the LM thir well, what do they say LM thirty eight I don't know why I like LM thirty eight LM thirty fives okay there so LM thirty five has an extra pin so does this LM thirty five supply the voltage what is the extra pin for you're right so they're getting warmer there's like a supply voltage I assume on the ground yes so LM thirty five for the LM thirty five to work what do you actually have to do huh sorry you have to give it voltage or an external voltage, external voltage input. That's an example of an active sensor. It's active, right? But as a passive sensor, does not need technically an external power supply, right? But that's like a uh, that's a uh, that's kind of like a I don't want to say iffy distinction, but the bottom line is the thermistor's temperature variation is an inherent, is an inbuilt physical property, right? The resistance changes. Whereas with this LM35, okay, the physical mechanism by which it measures temperature requires an external power supply. So that's the difference between an active sensor and a passive sensor, right? So now that you know what is the difference between an active sensor and a passive sensor, you should never forget it. Okay. So, but that's not important to us in the sense, it's not important as to how we exactly get the temperature. We don't know. We're just distinguishing, is the sensor active or it's not. Okay. All right. Now, since we are online, actually, and since we have time, so, and I can't open up the data sheet, let's look at, um, let's go to your syllabus. There it is. And, excuse me, let's look at the, um, oh my god, stop, there. Let's look at the link to the MATLAB OOP documentation, because you need to start going through that now. So you hopefully, or well, you should learn, you should be learning how to use MATLAB, now you should be learning how to use, you should be learning the concepts behind OOP. Finally, that MATLAB documentation, hopefully I do have Acrobat on this computer, I do. So this MATLAB documentation here combines this and this, right? So let's open it, take a look. Oh wait, I can't open it, never mind. I can't open it in IE, so let me just download it. Ah. Copy this thing. Let's see, copy that. Actually, instead of doing this, instead of copy, I probably just search for MATLAB. Oop. The advantage of looking at the non PDF version is um, you can actually read it. Yeah, here it is. So you can actually read it in um, the web browser and copy it into MATLAB, so you may not want, so class hierarchies, let's see, uh, developing classes, typical workflow, formulating a class, okay. So here's an example, we're not gonna do this, this is an example of a bank account, right? So it's, it's a little bit more involved, 
So using the bank account class, let's see. Uh, classes to represent. No, 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 no. Flexible workflow. The file writer class. No, this is not what I'm looking for. This is the advantage of looking at the PDF in the sense the PDF has all of this. Open object as data structure. Aha! So this is what I was looking for. So here's an example of a class that doesn't involve too much MATLAB functionality. Right. So we're going to use this ex uh, this kind of uh, structure. So let's do that. All right. So what we now need that we have some properties is we need a method, if you will, to set these properties. Okay. That's called as a constructor. Constructor. And a constructor is very special in the sense the constructor has the same name as the class, right? So it's a function, right? It returns an object of type temperature sensor. It has the same name as the class, and you use it to set the temperature. Location is active, okay? And then end. So if the number of arguments in our gain is MATLAB syntax, so let's get into whoops right here. So supports calling with zero arguments. So this checks if you are actually passing in the required number of arguments. Simple check, right? So then what we do is if an argument is zero, so there's an end there. So set mm, sensor dot temperature is temperature okay sensor dot location is location sensor dot is active is active whoops okay so is this syntax clear of a constructor so the dot you could say is borrowed from C language if you will, of, it's called dereferencing. All right. In other words, you look at this temperature property within the sensor. This is encapsulation, right? In the sense, outward to the outside world, the only access to these properties is through the constructor. Is that clear? So again, going back all the way like 10 minutes ago, when I asked you what is the difference between a function and a class, you see an example of the difference in the form of encapsulation, yes? <coughs> How would you do this in C language, for example? Can you do this in C language? So the answer is, it is very difficult. Right? It's very difficult to protect, if you will, these properties from the outside world. But you, let's look at, and that's what, uh, kind of what I'll end this lecture, in the sense, uh, let's instantiate some class, uh, some temperature sensors. Temperature sensor, uh, what was it? The temperature is, I don't know, 25 degrees Celsius. Location. Now, how would you specify the location? I'm going to specify it in the form of an array, right? 0, 1. Okay? Is active, is false. Okay? So here it is. So you have an object of type temperature sensor, S1. Now, my point is if I try to do this, Notice I can still access the temperature property of S1 from the outside world. All right. I, in other words, I have not made this property private. And there is a way to do that in MATLAB. Right? Because MATLAB supports the private uh, property, if you will, of OOP. And we'll do that later. But for now, let me instantiate another temperature sensor or another object. Type temperature sensor. I don't know, there's 30 degrees Celsius. Remember, this is at different locations of the greenhouse. Let's do 1.5 pi. All right. True. This is an active sensor. It could be an M35. There it is. Okay. Now, suppose, and this is what I'll end the lecture, I want to plot these temperature sensors on an XY coordinate system. And assign red circles to pat no red circles to active ones and blue circles to passive ones how would i do it so what what command would i use to do that 
So you understand the question? I want to plot these on a grid, right? So how do I, so what, let's, let's just think about the command you would use to plot this. What command would you use? So the goal is I want to plot, let me just make a script. Um, plot temperature sensors in the greenhouse on a grid. Blue circles represent passive sensors. Red circles rep whoops, I can't spell circles. Represent active sensors. So what command would I use? Assuming I can access the temp all the properties, which we can right now because we haven't protected them of the sensors. So what would I do? Huh? Plot. plot. You just use the plot command. So plot. So just simply, what would I do? Assuming, like, you know a priori, there are two sensors, S1 and S2. Let's keep it simple. So S1 dot location. Okay? And then what? Well, well, let's see. We can access each element of location, right? How would you do that? What's the syntax to do that? Parentheses, Parentheses and then what? One so one comma one, right? Or one comma two. So this would work. Yes. So this is a, what? What kind of a sensor is this? So let's just look at. Let's peek into the object and see what kind of a sensor is this. This is a passive sensor, right? And as to and technically, you, this is blasphemy in object-oriented programming, right? You should not be able to access the individual properties <coughs> most of the time, right? Some properties you may want to access, but okay, actually, in general, it's not a good idea. Uh, you're violating encapsulation when you try to access these properties. The only the paradigm of OOP is you should be able to only access properties through methods to protect data corruption. So we'll d we'll implement all that later, but for now, we we'll just uh, so red. No, this is passive sensor, right? So blue circle. I think B is for blue. And then let's just do S two dot location one comma one, right? S two dot location one comma two. Then red circle. Yes, and let's call this plot temperature uh, uh, sensor dot M. completion and there it is All right well where's my other one so there's the red what happened to the blue so am I using the wrong color for plot let's see B is blue all right so why don't I see anything so s1 dot location one comma one uh, so s2 is working out nicely All right so where is s1 1.5, 3.5, there it is. So why don't I see S1? It's, yeah, it's at the origin, but I don't see it. So it should be here. Oh! No, it should, I should see it. So, okay, let's try. Let me do something here. I don't know if this is the problem. Let's try that. And then I'll end the lecture. No, that's not the problem. I still don't see it. Let me change. All right, so anyway, I'm going to continue this next time. There's only six more minutes left. So I don't see the sensor at the origin, and I don't know why. Uh, I'll figure it out next time. But that's the... So this is the idea behind OOP. All right, so here it is again. There are some properties uh, of your particular object. And there are methods, if you will, to, in this case, we have a constructor which instantiate the properties. You also need a destructor which removes the object when not in use, right? And you also need methods to access uh, the properties. And what methods you need to access depends on what properties you have. So next time what we'll do is we'll continue building on this OOP model 
in MATLAB. Okay, maybe not the temperature sensor, maybe something else. Uh, but what I would like you to do is I want you to read, continue reading through Booch, and the best way to understand this is to take the C++ code examples given in Booch, combine it with, well, this MATLAB PDF and translate it to MATLAB. Right? Excuse me, and once we get back after break, the last five weeks of the course, it'll accelerate pretty fast, right? So over the break, I'll put up all your labs, remaining labs, the project, everything, right? And if you're not really comfortable with MATLAB syntax, uh, as you can see, it starts getting, it, uh, this MATLAB OOP assumes you know MATLAB syntax very well, and you also know the concepts behind OOP very well. So you got to uh, keep up, or if you start falling behind after exam one, it gets very difficult, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, keep practicing. We'll see you tomorrow.